Howdy, it's Anna. I am looking down at a specimen of the uh, Amanita amera rubescens group. This is a group of species in the Amanita genus uh, that is exclusive to North America. They are listed as edible. I do not uh, eat blushing Amanitas. That, again, is the species group, Amera rubescens. Um, so you're going to have to look to other sources for that. But I do love to find them because, uh, like a lot of Amanita mushrooms, they're very um, special, they're really beautiful, and they have a couple of distinguishing characteristics that, in my opinion, are really winning. So. Um, I have gone through, I think, six mushroom knives this season, uh, so I am down to like this spork thing that I, uh, I don't even remember when I got it, but I have actually discovered this might be my new favorite mushroom tool uh, because it makes it really easy to lever out my specimens. So I suppose I've uh, uh, gained a new appreciation for the ridiculous things that uh, I bought for myself when I was an early 20-something. Anyway, so here is uh, the specimen, a specimen of uh, Amera rubescens. There's actually two uh, mushrooms here that looks like they were conjoined. Um, so this is a very, very common uh, variety of mushroom. Like a lot of other, uh, you know, species and species groups, identifying them and distinguishing them in the field can be extraordinarily difficult. So I usually just say Amanita Amera rubescens group. It's a blusher, and I'm satisfied with that, especially considering that I don't eat them. Anyway, um, like other Amanitas, they are a classic cap and stem mushroom. Um, they also have um, a base that is enlarged. Um, one of the distinguishing characteristics of uh, the Amanita genus is that they come up in sort of a baby protective uh, layer of tissue, and that leaves some sort of um, clump of tissue at the base, or uh, sometimes just an enlargement. And in the, in the case of Amera rubescens, it's you know, not all that distinct. So you're kind of relying on other features to narrow it down to uh, Amanita specifically. So it does have this uh, enlarged base and sometimes you'll see sort of remains of um, uh, tissue around the base of the mushroom itself. It does have a partial veil, so there's a ring on the stem. Uh, this one has sustained a good bit of damage, but uh, you can see there is sort of a, a distinct ring along the stem. When the mushroom comes up, it's kind of um, pallid. Uh, but as it is, um, you know, affected by environmental conditions or rained on, it does what it gets its common name from. It starts blushing. So, you know, when this mushroom came up, it was kind of a whitish tan, most likely. Um, it does have warts on the cap. Those are the remains of that universal veil, and that's a consistent feature for Amera rubescens. But uh, you will see these sort of uh, streaky reddish areas. So that is really noticeable on the cap. Oftentimes on the stem also you'll see really pronounced streaking um, of this sort of like burgundy reddish color. The gills are pale, but you also have uh, similarly some of that staining reaction. Um, so, you know, that I think is the really um, most significant trait about Amera rubescens. Now there are things that look similar to it. There are a lot of uh, Amanitas that have warts on the cap, including everything in the Muscarii uh, section, which is Amanita muscaria and Amanita pantherina. So some of the mushrooms that have really strong and not so positive psychoactive effects um, have these warty caps. Anyway, um, you know, if you're interested in eating these again, I highly recommend uh, getting very comfortable with them, very comfortable with other Amanitas as well. Uh, but for my purposes, I just love seeing them because they're kind of cute and uh, I like seeing the sort of erratic streaking patterns on them because anytime a mushroom kind of has its own individual destiny as a fruiting body, I am usually super pumped about that. Anyway, Amanita Amerirubescens group is traveling off into the right.